A long time ago, in a land far away from Bridge of Allen, lived a group of people called the Hoos. They all lived in a town called Whoville, and loved Christmas. But in the mountains above them lived a mean and miserable Grinch. And that is where our story begins. Every Hoodon in Whoville liked Christmas a lot, but the Grinch who lived just north of Whoville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas, the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why, no one quite knows the reason. It could be that his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think the most likely reason of all was that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve, hating the hoos, staring down from his cave with a sour grinchy frown at the warm lighted windows below in their town, for he knew every who done in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging up a subtle wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. <gasps> Tomorrow's Chris is practically here. Then he growled with his Grinch fingers nervously drumming. I must find a way to stop this Chris from coming. Meanwhile, in Whoville. For tomorrow he knew all the Who girls and boys would wake bright and early and rush for their toys. And then, oh the noise, Oh, the noise, noise, noise. That's one thing he hated. The noise, noise, noise. Then his young and old would sit down to a feast. And he'd feast, and he'd feast, and he'd feast, feast, feast. They would feast on who pudding and rare who roast beef, which was something the Grinch couldn't stand in the least. And then they do something he liked least of all. Every hoodown and hoodle, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. They'd stand hand in hand and the hoos would start singing. They'd sing and they'd sing and they'd sing, sing, sing. I was following the I was following. Back at the ice cave. And the more the Grinch fought of the Who's Christmas sing, the more the Grinch fought. I must stop this whole thing. Why, for 53 years I've put up with this. Now, I must find a way to stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Then the Grinch got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderful, awful idea. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are a heel. You're as cuddly as the cat is. You're as charming as a meal, Mr. Grinch. You're a bad banana with a greasy black pig. Thirty-nine and a half foot pole. 
in his throat and he made a quick Santa Claus hat and coat and he chuckled and clucked. What a great pretty trick with his coat and his hat. I'll just say say Nick. Oh my name is Reindeer. The Grinch looked around but since Reindeer is scarce there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No. The Grinch simply said, If I can't find reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dogs Max and Pax, then he took some red thread and he tied a big horn on the top of their heads. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh and hitched up old Max and Pax. Then the Grinch said, Giddy up! <laughs> All their windows were dark, quiet snow filled the air, all of whose were all dreaming sweet dreams without care, when he came to the first little house on the square. This is stop number one. The old Grinchy Claws hissed, and he climbed to the roof, empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney, a rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. Ow, ay, hot, hot. Then he stuck his head out of the fireplace floor where all the little food presents all stacked in a row. These stocking he grinned, are the first to go. Then he slithered and slumped with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room and he took every present. Popguns and bicycles, ice cakes and drums. Checkerboards, tricycles, popcorn and plums and he stuffed them in bags. Then the Grinch very nimbly stuffed all the bags one by one up the chimney. Then he slunk to the ice box. He took the Who's feast. He took the Who pudding. He took the turkey beast. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. He cleaned out that ice box as quick as a flash. Why, that old Grinch even took their last can of Who hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now, grinned the Grinch, I'll stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shudder when he heard a small sound like a coo of a dove. He turned around fast and he saw a small coo, little Cindy Lou Who, who was not more than two. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny Who daughter who got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why are you taking our Christmas tree? But do you know that old Grinch was so smart and so slick, he thought out up a lie. He thought it up quick. Why, my sweet little tot. The fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side, so I'm taking it back to my workshop. I'll fix it up there and I'll bring it back here. And his fib fooled the child, then he patted her head and he got her a drink and he sent her to bed. And when Cindy Lou who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and stuffed the tree up. Then the last thing he took was a log for their fire. Then he went up the chimney and self the old liar. On their walls he left nothing but some hooks and some wire. Then one speck of food that he had left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. Then he did the same thing to the other whose houses, leaving crumbs much too small for all the other whose mouses. Santa hadn't been what Cindy Lou expected. She looked sadly out of the window, wondering what Christmas was really all about. Why 
can't I find you? Why have you gone away? Where is the laughter you used to bring me? Why can't I hear music play? My world is changing, I'm rearranging, does that mean Christmas changes too? Quarter past dawn, all the hoos still a bed, all the hoos still a snooze, when he packed up his sleigh, packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrapping, the tags, the, and the tinsel, the trimmings, the trappings. A thousand feet up, up the sides of Matt Crumpet, he rolled up the slopes and tipped up to dump it. Hoo hoo to the hoos! He was grinchishly humming, to finding out nothing, no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up and just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open for a minute or two. Then all the hoos and hoover will all cry. Boo hoo! That's a sound. Grinch and the Grinch. That I simply must, must hear. So he paused and the Grinch put his hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound rising over the snow. It started in low, then it started to grow. But the sound wasn't sad. Why, this sound was merry. It couldn't be so, but it was merry. Very. He stood down at Whoville. The Grinch popped his eyes. Then he shook. What he saw was shocking. Surprise. Every Who down in Whoville, tall and small, was singing, without any presents at all. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came some, somehow or another. It came just the same. It's nice. 
His Grinch feet, ice cold in the snow, stood puzzling and puzzling. How could this be so? It came without ribbons, it came without tags, it came without packages, boxes or bags. And he puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville, they say that Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. And he bought back the toys and food for the feast. And he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast turkey beak!